Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to be in his presence again tonight. Each time I'm here to teach the word, my heart leaps for joy. My heart jumps up and I feel so happy because God is about to do a, thing of, a great thing in our lives again in Jesus' name. We thank God for the book of Micah. Today we'll be going into the book of Malachi. Amen. 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 I know you are all happy. And there's something I want to say to us. You see these books that we are studying, make sure you have them at your fingertips. The man of God will be calling us, including myself. Amen. So that we will come and share what you understand. So that when the, when the trumpet sound on you, you might not be disappointed. So just make sure that you get yourself ready. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, get yourself ready. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And it was written by the prophet Malachi, who was God's prophet in Jerusalem. Malachi is the last of the prophets. He had an oracle, which we are going to be looking into the scripture now, which is another word for oracle. He had a message. May God give us messages. Amen. Messages in the name of Jesus. So this prophet was very sensitive to God. So he had a message from the Lord. If you are sensitive to God, you will have a message from the Lord. God wants to speak to every one of us. So be attentive. Throughout this period, I will read the book of Malachi. And each time you are in church, you will receive a message from God in Jesus' name. Amen. Malachi is the last of the prophet. He had oracle, a message from God reminding the Jews. What does the oracle, what does the message say? He was reminding the Jews, the Jews who are God's own covenant people, of their willful disobedience, which has led them to having a broken relationship with him. This message is a serious message. Thank God for the boldness that Malachi has to come and talk to the people. He had the message about how they were misbehaving willfully, you know, doing wrong things to God and uh, making God to be unhappy. There are some children that do that, and there are some adults that do that to your own children. We just had Father's Day. Some people will just neglect and say, who is that father? I'm not going to know. These are the things that they were also doing. Malachi preached after Agai, Zechariah, and Nehemiah, about 430 B.C. He rebukes or scolds the priests and the people for the evil practices which have led to their downfall, and he also encouraged them to repent and be restored. What are the evil practices of the people? Neglect of the worship of God. Because the Bible says the time has come that the true worshiper must do what? Worship God in spirit and in truth. But the people who are not worshiping God the way they ought to worship God. They were not serving God the way they ought to serve God. Their act of worship is false. Their act, act of worship is fake. Their act of worship is to please man. So these are the message that God sent Malachi to go to tell the people. What are the evil practices? Another evil practice, failing to live according to God's own will. Another evil practice, the priests were corrupt. You remember in the time of Micah, some of the priests, the, the, the judgment of God to the priest, even in the time of uh, Malachi, the priests were corrupt. They could not lead the people aright, despite the love of God towards them. God was not really happy with them. But the people have no excuse to serve God. Because at that time, the temple had been made ready by people like Ezra, Nehemiah. They have done the great work rebuilding the temple of the Lord. So they have a place to worship. But what excuse do they have not to worship God? Like we today, we have... Everything to worship God. In those days that we're moving from place to place, you know, we might say, okay, we don't have it. Before church, start like 7 o'clock, some people have been in the house around 4 p.m. to pack instruments. Before they will come to the church to lay the instrument, they go to Father Owen to collect the key. We don't do that these days. So we don't have an excuse to even come late to church. Everything has been made ready. But these people... They have no excuse too, to worship God because the temple had been made ready for them at that time. Malachi confronted them for their ingratitude. He confronted them for being ungrateful. He confronted them 
for the way, for lack of gratitude, which is uh, ingratitude, or lack of appreciation. God has done a lot for us today. I want us not to make God to be ungrateful. So that takes us to the book of Malachi. Amen. He said, Malachi chapter 1, an oracle or a message, the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, verse 2, says the Lord. God was giving them a message of hope. Look, I have loved you. I love you so much. And I've done all this for you. So he's sending the prophet to them and he said, look, tell my people I still love them. But you ask how have you loved us? If I will answer that question for you tonight, you can see it from the book of John chapter 3, 16 to 17. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Verse 17. But that the world through him might be what? Might be saved. So did God love the world? So the people were asking. These are part of the, they are, they are being ungrateful. He said, but you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? The Lord says, yet I have loved Jacob. But Esau, I have ha hated and have turned his mountain into a wasteland and left his inheritance uh, to the jack desert jackals. God confronted them. I was telling them, look, when Esau and Jacob were to be born, this story you can see in the book of Genesis 25. I really want to quote it well. Amen? The story of Jacob and Esau, you can see in the book of Genesis 25. 10 to 25, when you get home, you must be able to read it. When these two are to come out, and when they come out, when one was grabbing the other one's heel, the story of Esau and Jacob, Esau sold his birthright, and, uh, uh, yeah. yes, Esau sold his birthright, even at that time. When God says that he hates Esau and uh, loved Jacob, what God is trying to tell us is that Jacob is going to be from the background or from the ancestor of the Lord Jesus Christ. God loved Jacob because it's through Jacob that uh, uh, visions will be fulfilled. It's through Jacob that great things will be happening. It's through Jacob that Jesus himself will come and die for the sin of the whole world. It's through Jacob that the Messiah of the whole world is going to come. So he loved Jacob so much because through Jacob, great manifestations will follow. I hate Jacob. means Jacob was a chosen one. When he says he, uh, um, uh, he, uh, he hate Esau and, and, and loved Jacob, Jacob, it means Jacob was a chosen one. The one that the Messiah will come. And through Jacob, many nations will be saved. And is, is that not happening to you? And is, not, is that not happening to me today? It is happening. And to, to, to enhance this, if you look at the book of Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, let's quickly go to it. Because I want us to go back home when you, when you get there to be able to read it as well. Romans chapter 9 begins to talk about God's sovereign choice. Jacob is God's sovereign choice. Amen? He began to talk about Israel's past, present, and future. And in, the, in, in Israel's past, when you look at that verse, uh, verse 10, let's, go, let's start from verse 6. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descend, descended from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Remember, this was the prophecy that was given to Sarah. Even though Hagar has given birth to Ishmael. In other words, 
It is not the natural children who are God's children, but it's the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebecca's children had uh, not only that, but Rebecca's children had one and the same father. Our father Isaac, yet before the twins were born, or had been born, or had, uh, or had done anything good, or no, no, no. Yet, before the twins were born or had, or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will what? Serve the younger. Just as it is written. Jacob, I love, you see, confirming that scripture again, but Esau, I what? I hated. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? I want you to answer it. Is God unjust? No. Not at all. For he says to... Excuse me. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have what? Mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. That comes, confirms it for you. That Jacob is God's own sovereign what? Choice. And that's the reason why he said he loved Jacob. It is not by our own merit that we are saved today. Amen? Amen. But it's by God's own goodness and what? And mercy. So I want us to have that right there. Edom may say, though I go, I, I'm back now in Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Edom may say, though we have been crushed, we will rebuild the ruin. But this is what the Lord Almighty say. They may build, but I will demolish. They will be called the wicked land. Why will they be called the wicked land? I'm going to tell you shortly. A people always under the route of the Lord. You will see it with your own eyes and say, great is the Lord, even beyond the border of Israel. Do you know that the Edomite or Edom that is referred to here are the descendant of Esau. These are arrogant people. These are self-centered people. These are proud people, the descendant of uh, Esau. They are troublemaker. What their great uh, uh, grandfather did, Esau. You know how he wanted to kill his, his brother. In that book of Genesis 27. The account of Abraham and Isaac on how Jacob and Esau were born in Genesis 25, 19 to 34. In Genesis 27, 41, we read that Esau held grudge against his brother Jacob, who deceitfully took his blessing twice. He took his birthright and his blessing. And that you can see in Genesis 25, 24 to 34, and Genesis 27, 14 to 30. So Esau held a grudge against his brother. And this has continued in his, in, in his time. So this nation, Edomites, mistreat their bro brothers all the time. And they always come to fight God's own people. I pray that there will not be anyone that will be an Edomite in our midst in the name of Jesus. When you read the book of Obadiah, the book of Obadiah, let's go, after Amos. You will see, you know we have read that scripture, Amos, Osea. Joel. I don't want to get away from the Yes, Obadiah. There now. Praise the Lord. If you look at the book of uh, Obadiah, he talks about how Edom, uh, 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 Edom will be dis uh, destroyed, the destruction of Edom. And God gave this vision to Obadiah. There are things that were mentioned there in the book of uh, Obadiah, verse 3. Let's look at verse 2. 
Or let me even start from verse 1 because I've just been picking them. The vision of Obadiah. This is what the sovereign Lord say about Edom. We have had a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nation to say, Rise and let us go against her for battle. See, I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart. I want you to underline it. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You will live in the cleft of the rock. And make your home on the heights. You will say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will what? Bring you down. Underline one of the elements of the Edomites. The pride of their, of their heart, arrogance because of their riches. And he went to say, but how, is, uh, but how Esau will be ransacked? His hidden treasures pillaged. That is, will be robbed, stolen. It will be plundered upon. And he said, all your allies will force you to the, to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you. But you will not detect it. You can see that verse 4, Edom, Edom may say, you know, the pride of their heart, but yet they will be ruined. In that day declares the Lord, will I not destroy the wise men of Edom, men of understanding in the mountain of Esau? Your warriors, O Teman, will terrify it. And everyone in Esau's mountain will be cut down in the slaughter. Because of the violence against who? Your brother. Your brother Jacob, you will be what? Covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On the day you stood, at, stood aloof with strangers carried off, uh, uh, while strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lot for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. You should not look down on your own brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah. In the day of their destruction. Do you remember Ezekiel? Do not say, aha. Amen. Amen. Nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. And he began to talk and talk and talk. When you get home, read that because of time. Amen. Amen. The Lord will grant you understanding. Amen. But from that verse 17, the Lord came up. Hallelujah. Edom is likened to all nations that are hostile to God. I want you to listen to this. Nations, sorry, I don't know whether it's the hair, something is troubling my face. Sorry. Nations as in people, nations as in nations. This is what Edom is likened to. In this book, we see four aspects of God's judgment. God will certainly punish them. Amen? Because of the evil they have done. Those faithful to God will have hope for a new future. You can also see in this picture that God is sovereign in human history. You can also see in this scripture that God's ultimate purpose is to establish his eternal kingdom. That is the reason why I was telling them, was, it was reassuring Jacob here. I have covenant with you. I have covered, said the house of Jacob will be a fire. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the house of Jacob will possess the inheritance of the Edomite. The house of Esau when they are being judged. May the Lord help us. Now that takes us to that scripture so that you can have an understanding. Verse 4 of that Malachi. Edom may say in their arrogance. Can I put it there? Adam may say in their pride, though we have been crushed, <laughs> we will rebuild the ruin. You know, sometimes when parents are punishing children or God is punishing some people, they will come up with arrogance. May the Lord help us. That is how you can understand this Adam. Though we are crushed, who is he? Even if, he, if they do this to me, I'll come up in another way. I know how to beat the young something. 
Or someone is being punished in the church because of what you have done and it's like, who? May the Lord help us concerning that. Is the attitude of the Edomite. Per adventure, you start to see that in your brother and your sister tell them that's the attitude of Edomite. You cannot afford to do that. Because the end is what? Punishment. Though we have been crushed, we will rebuild the ruins. But this is what the Almighty say. They may build, but I will what? Demolish. They will be called the wicked land. Why? I told you that. Why are they called the wicked land? Because of their arrogance. Amen? Because of the way they have taken advantage of other nations around them. That's why they are called the wicked. You can see the word wicked. W I C K D. Capital letter W. Amen. We stand for Satan himself. Call the wicked land. A people always under the route of the Lord. You will see it with your own eyes and say, Great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. And now this message continued to, uh, uh, Malachi continued to speak for this message to the, to the priests. You know, before I continue in that, this book of Malachi can be divided into three parts. The, the, the message of the oracle to the sinful priests, which is in chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 2, verse 9. The oracle or the message of the Lord from Malachi to the sinful people, which is from chapter 2 to chapter 3, verse 15. And the third part, which is the, uh, the oracle of Malachi to the faithful few, which is in chapter 3, to chapter 4. Amen. From verse 16, chapter 3, to chapter 4, to the end. So now we began to see the problem of the people, of, of the priests. Because God said to them from the beginning that he loves them. I have loved you, says God. But you have been so ungrateful in the way you are dealing with me. And now God sent this message. Of why he was not really happy with them. He said a son honors his father. I want you to get this very clear because it also affects us today. Amen. Amen. Looking back to the uh, father's day. want to specially say thank you as well. A lot of you honor the man of God, Apostle Williams. Amen. God demands us to honor our spiritual parents, our physical parents. And as many people that are parenting us. But in the case of the other priests... Look at what they did that God was sending a message to them. A son honors his father. God was laying the foundation. And a servant is master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? Why have you been living these careless lives? Why have you been taking me for granted if I am your father? Why have you been rude to me? If I'm a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you, O priests, who shows content to my name. It is you, O priests, who shows disrespect to my name. Because you are not living a life of example to the people. It is you, O priests. That do not worship me sincerely from your heart. So the people cannot follow you. It is you, all priests, that are doing wrong things. Showing bad example to my people. He said, but you asked. Remember, he said they show contempt for his name. How? But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? You place the foul food on my altar. He began to tell them. How do they place the foul food on God's altar? They give them what they are eating. The people, what they eat, they are eating here. I want to hear. They are not the, the, the foundation that people like Ezra has laid down in teaching the word of God. Maybe when we get to Ezra, you'll be able to have an understanding of what I'm talking about. The foundation that Ezra has laid down. How they will neglect God's work and be doing their own work. 
How they will neglect the, the, the things that God has told them to do and the priests are not telling the people. We want to salute and thank God for the man of God that we have in our midst that is showing us the way. They know some things from the Bible, but they hide it from the Lord. Because he said, look, we, we want you to know everything. That's why we are showing you the Bible. You can only come on Sunday and tell you come on Sunday and be leading you prayers and all the rest of that and teach you what you're eating here, want to hear. But he said, you have, you, 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 you have made my people to be hungry. You have made my people not to thirst and hunger after righteousness. They do not know the word of God. Neither will they be able to know their right in God. As parents that are, that, 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 that are priests in the house, you know, various priests in various capacity, you have not had time to study the word with your children at home. You have not put the word of God down for them to be able to understand. You are the only one that has been coming to church. You have not been bringing your children to come to church to have understanding. You do not teach them the word of God at home either. Your home is not a Christian home. Your home is just a place where they play video. Video of things that are going on and buying and selling in the world. That is what your home is like. Your home is like a disco. It is you, O priest, that have, shown, that have not shown respect to my word. It is you. It is from you. He said, you place the five food on my altar. Altar is a place where we sacrifice. The type of sacrifice that you are bringing on my altar is wrong. The type of way that you are, you are leading my people is wrong. You are priests. You are parents. You are mothers. You are leaders. You are deacons. You are deaconesses. Because that's the reason you have been ordained. Amen. You elders. It is you. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the Lord's table is con uh, contemptible. That is, the Lord's table is disgraceful or is shameful. When you bring blind animals for sacrifice, you know it is on the altar that they sacrifice, blind animals. Even when the priests are not example in the area of their giving. When the priests are not example in the area where they, where they dish out the right word to the people. He said, you bring to my altar blind animals. Like you see it in the time of Cain and Abel. They were descendants of Adam and Eve. They were taught how to bring a good sacrifice to God. God is telling us parents here as well. We must teach our children how they give to God. Amen. They were taught, but uh, Cain, Cain decided to go his own way. When it was time to bring their sacrifice, Cain gave all these blind type of sacrifices. Gave rotten things, bad, bad things, and the sacrifice does not have favor when they start to burn the sac offering. But uh, um, Abel gave the best to the Lord. And the Lord said in that Genesis chapter 4, upon Abel's offering, the Lord had what? Favor. So how? And he began to tell them, you, when you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Hallelujah. You know, he said, look at the society. When you are going, when, when, let's say you, you, like, like you want a contract. The government gave you a contract and you want to go and just say, okay, thank you. There is a way that you will say thank you to your governor. All this thing that is happening today is happening here. I was able to give a story yesterday about my father-in-law. <laughs> Hallelujah. This story about my father-in-law. You know, in those days, they were promoting teachers. He was to be promoted, you know, to the next stage of this headmastership thing that he was doing. And they will not promote him. They will come. You teachers, you understand what I'm saying? They, 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 somebody that, they will, that will come and monitor your work. Every time they are coming, they keep on failing him. So this person now came. As this person came, which is uh, my father-in-law's cousin, he was a, a commissioner for education at that time, but he said he now came by himself. He never knew my husband, although they were related. Family, real family, close family. And then he now came. Yes, my father-in-law's name is Williams. It's Williams, but they, they, didn't, they don't have a clue whether they, they are related. And then that one came because he has to come and see by himself. 
the way something, and as he was looking at the way my father-in-law was teaching and everything, he saw excellence in everything that he was doing. Then he said, why have they been failing you? This man is just a crazy one. You know those ones that just want to do right. And he said, look, I pass you. And uh, by the time he passed my father-in-law, you know what happened? My father-in-law now carried to low to low talkie. <laughs> he now asked that, uh, where is your office? Or where is home or something like that? Then he said, okay. He now carried taxi, carried turkey and everything. Said, no, 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 no. And that one is, you know, when you take somebody as an English mentality. When he brought to, to, to low to low, he said, I can understand turkey. And every, just to come and say thank you. It's not a bribe. He said, thank you. You know, sometimes if somebody does things for you, you just want to appreciate, you know. And that is what he has come to do. That one said, no, I don't want it. By the way, which Williams are you? And they began to talk. He never knew that this is just his cousin. This is just his cousin. Are you listening to me? So God was asking them, because God sees all these things that we are doing on earth. If you can give good things to your governor, try offering them to your own governor. Would they be pleased with you? Will he accept you? Says the Almighty. Even governors, the ordinary people. The way you dress. If you are to go to the governor, will you wear shorts to the church and say it's sunny? You will be in suit. Amen. Amen. You will not wear short to, to meet your governor. You will not dress anyhow. The way some of us dress anyhow to church. No. These are part of the worship. Amen. You worship God in prayer because you don't only put worship only in singing. If governor is coming to this church today, if you have to sing, will you sing? Because governor, they come with gadget, television, and everything. Eh, eh, ah, uh. <laughs> you know, you understand? Everybody be crazy. Hallelujah. Will you offer that kind of sacrifice to governor? No. Will you dress anyhow to governor? No. I remember when General Goron, Goron was getting married. My uniform is pleated all around, pleated white with nice belt. The ironing was so serious and the starch. <laughs> the general goal that I will not see, thank God that he said thank you to me recently that God brought us together. <laughs> because we are only going, we are, we are selected few to go. Are you listening to me? So you don't take that time for granted. And we are in Marina that day, waving the flag. When Victoria was coming, we are singing, Victoria is so beautiful. You know everything, we are crazy about that. We have been there early. We didn't get there late. So I'm much more the king of kings and the lord of lords. Then I go and said recently to me and said to me, I said, I was at your wedding. He said, I didn't see you. Maybe if I start to look at you as a crowd, I'll see you. He said, but I didn't say thank you then. I just want to say thank you for coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is what God is saying. If you worship God with everything God has given to you, if that time they said we should donate to, we will do it. Are you listening to me? They were showing something that the queen was doing recently. Do you know how many, I was watching on the television, even the guards. Do you know how many days they have been training? All because they go and want to go and display for a few hours. And I looked at it, it's not up to one hour or maybe about two hours or so. When they match out the queen, all of them put their hair like you, do, you know what it is to go like this and be riding on the horse? And they were beating the drum. Maybe somebody was beating on the... You know, if we can honor people of the world like that, how much more? The king of kings and the lord of lords. The mighty God. We say we want... The convention is coming. People are not even thinking about it. You know, they were interviewing one of the... One of, one of the guards. And when they interviewed, they said, how do you maintain this from 18-something... And he said, ah, even recently, one of the gold on the drum fell off. He said, it's my, her majesty was looking. He said, I'm so sorry, I'm not supposed to look at the face of the, her majesty. He first of all took her excuse. And he said, when I looked at the face, how the face of, the, of her majesty looked, she frowned and knew something had happened. He said, from that time, I was checking around when we got there. I knew that this, that God, because I, I, I saw the place that he was looking. How many of you are looking at your leaders like that? And seeing that something, there must be something wrong here that we need to put in place. 
you know, sometimes watch television and look at all this uh, news and everything. You'll be able to see things. You'll be able to carry you forward in the things that you do. How many of you are looking at your, let me put husbands or wife looking, uh, husband looking at their wives like that? Or not to come and talk of looking at God. He knew something was wrong with the, with, with the band. And that is what God was saying there. You know how to honor your governors outside. You know how to honor people outside. You know, I've had somebody preach before. He says some people, they are crazy. When they go, when they see their boss and on something like that, they, 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 they'll be working so hard. But when they see, they, 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 when they are not with them, you know what I'm saying? But when they see a boss that gives them opportunity and everything, they, <laughs> sorry boss, they will, they, will, they will be misbehaving. That is how God is to us. God loves us so much. And we must make sure that we don't misbehave. So God was not happy to send the prophet to them. Try offering such a gift to governors. Will he be pleased with you? Will he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Now implore God to be gracious to us. With such offering from your hands. Will he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. He will not accept us. Amen. Look at what God did for us. That just came to my memory now. Second Corinthians chapter 2. I think, uh, 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 second, no, Second Corinthians chapter 5. He said, he who knew no sin was made sin for us. So that we can have opportunity to become the righteousness of God. God did so much for us. But what are we doing to God? What are we doing to God? He gave his only begotten son so that we might have life. He took us from the, from, from my generation of Abraham. He loved us so much. And we became the spiritual Jews. But how much love are we showing to the Lord? I want you to hold this for. This was the reason why God sent Malachi to the people. And I believe that Malachi cannot get to this our generation. That's why we have this book that I'm reading to send it to you as well. God's heart for you. And how is your heart towards God? Oh, that one of you will shut the temple door. So that you will not light useless fires on the altar. I'm not pleased with you, says the Almighty. It's better for so, such a person not to even come to church at all. Amen? Than to say you are part of a church or part of God's people and then you are acting otherwise. Says the Lord Almighty, and I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nation, nations from the rising to the setting of the sun. In every place, incense, and pure offering will be brought to my name. Incense and pure offering that he's talking about there, he's talking about the significance of prayer. Thank God for this church, the way God has been moving us, that we have been bringing incense, 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 amen? amen. Genuine one. And he talked about pure offering, which is praise. The way we have been praising God in this church. And why, why did, why is, why, is this, uh, uh, are we talking about the incense and the pure offering? So that the name of God can be, can be great. Amen? When we worship God truthfully, when we pray to him truthfully, our lives begin to be transformed. Then we can reflect God on every, on every corner. Everywhere, then we can reflect him properly. Say, my name will be great among the nations. From the rising to the setting of the sun, in every place, incense and pure offering will be brought to my name. Because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. For God's name to be great, we must pray. Amen? We must praise him. Our worship must be genuine. It must be true. When we begin to serve God truthfully, guess what happened? Then we can draw more soul to the kingdom. And as we are drawing more souls to the kingdom, God's name will be made manifest. And his name will be great. May his name continue to be great. In the name of Jesus. He said, but you profane it by saying to the Lord's table, it is defiled. And of his food, it is contemptible. And you say, what a burden. And you sniff at it contemptuously. Says the Lord Almighty. That is, we scorn it. The things of God, we do, I don't care attitude. That is what he's talking about there. We feel to serve God is a burden. I'm tired today. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't. 
It's not a burden to serve God. May the Lord continue to encourage every one of us. Because sometimes Satan comes to deceive us in our hearts, in our mind. Ah, Wednesday again. Oh, just coming from work, I'm tired today. I didn't get enough rest yesterday. We must make sure. The Bible said, do not be deceived. God cannot be what? Mocked. And you say, what a burden. And you sniffed, sniff at it. Contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. When you bring injured, crippled, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands? <laughs> says the Lord. Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable meal in his flock and vow to give it, but then sacrifice a blemished animal to the Lord. What God is saying that you must give your best. Not out of your best. You go and look at the worst thing to give to God. May God help us so that we can give our best. Can I seize the opportunity to say to us now, God demands the best of your time. God demands the best of your life. <laughs> God demands not only when you want to do birthday that you come and give your life to God here. and be, and be. God wants you to be thankful every time. When you wake up in the morning, God demands your praise. God demands your worship. God demands that you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. A new day has come. Thank you for what you're about to do this day. Thank you for the war affected nation. God wants you to, you, to, to, to continue to worship him. That is what he's talking about. It's not that you call upon him today, tomorrow in two days. We have prayer book now. If I ask people that, how many people study that prayer book every day? Some don't even have. We have prayer going on in this place. How many people worship God today? Even come, seize the opportunity of joining saints of God to fellowship together. How many of you? God demands the best. Because we might be looking at this. They have the best uh, uh, flock in their hands. But they will go and take the, the you know, the least time. You just worship God when you want to. That is what he's talking about there. If you want to relate it to worship. If you want to relate it to prayer, you don't pray regularly as God ordains it. When it comes to giving, God said, bring your tithes and your offering. Sometimes you give, sometimes you don't give. Sometimes God understands. He doesn't understand. That's what he's telling you. That's why he's sending me to you today. He doesn't understand why you should not give the best. God said we should give to one another. When you want to give to people, you go and look for worse things. People are getting married in the church. You go into your lot and get one of the presents that they're giving to you that you don't like. And go and give it to people. God is not happy about that. Amen? Amen. You want to give people things? Okay, God knows I don't have money. The best of your best, that somebody will carry the gift that you give them and they will glorify the name of the Lord. Are you listening to me? Not, ah, some people, people are giving back. That is how you worship God, I'm telling you. That is how you worship God. You just go to one corner and say, this is a two ninety nine dollars dress. When you know, and you give it to somebody, God is looking at your earning to see what you are going to give to others. You don't go and give rubbish. Even some don't give at all. <laughs> May the Lord help you. Some don't even give at all. People have blessed your life. God has done so much for you. We are raising money. We say, okay, we want people to give 100 pounds. Some people are coming every day to sit on these chairs. But some people have sown to give to this chair, but they have not given. God knows I don't have 100 pounds. Yeah, I can give 10 pounds. That was I, but God sees your heart. That is what God is talking about now. Are you listening to me? Some come here to be blessed every Sunday. You don't have. I don't have a job. Okay, we know you don't have a job. But you have been eating. To give offering is difficult. Even to people that are collecting dough, to give your tithes from your dough is difficult. How will God take you out of dough? God will not take you out of dough. You continue to be on it. You have studied so hard. You have gone to school. You are looking for a job. How will God give you a job when you are not concerned about the things of God? And God has given you a job. You use that job to cripple, to, that cripple offering. You come from work. You can't come to church. How will God make you to continue in that job? And they will not tell you to go. Because you're lazy here, lazy there, lazy. May the Lord help us to have this understanding. God is in need of the best of everything that you have. The best. Say the best. The best. The best. The best. Hallelujah. 
For I'm a great king, says the Lord Almighty. God is great. He's a great king. He's to be honored. He's to be respected. He's to be praised at all times, says the Lord Almighty. And my name is to be feared amongst where? The nations. Show me the one that fears the Lord. I will show, show you the one that sacrificially gives everything. It's not when you are in need of something that you come to God. It's not when you are in poverty that you come to God. It's not, you, you don't come to God because he has delivered us already. But he wants you to come to him. He wants you to serve him faithfully. Now he's going to the warning or the rebuke, admonition for the priests. He's not told the priests the way they, the, the, uh, what they have done. Their act of worship is not truthful. The way they are leading the people is wrong. They are not leading by example. They are not giving the God the best of everything that God demands from them. And he went forward to, to talk about further rebuke and further warning, which we are going to stop in verse 9. You know, I told you the, 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 the warning or the message, the oracle to the priests. Looking at that from chapter 1 to chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. Then from chapter, uh, chapter 2, 10, we are going to begin to look at for the sinful people when we meet next. And it goes to chapter 2, and now this is the admonition. This is admonition. Uh, this admonition is for you, O oh priests. I love the way he put it. O oh what? O oh priests. I don't know if I remember to tell you that priests here is talking about are leaders in the church. He's talking about priests, a bishop, elders, and all the rest of it. But he's also calling you individuals as what? Priests. Because the Bible in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says we are priests. We are royal priesthood. We are peculiar people. We are so special before God. Amen. Hallelujah. People that have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into his wonderful kingdom of light. That is the people that we are. So we are priests. So he's talking to priests now in various capacities. So he said, and, for, and now this admonition is for you, O priests. If you do not listen. And if you do not set your heart to honor my name. <laughs> Says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them. Because you have not set your heart to honor me. May we set our heart to honor God in Jesus' name. He is direct what will happen to anyone that does not set his heart. Because God has done so much for us. He's done so much for us. You know, as I said, come, let's reason together, says the Lord. He said, though your sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as snow. Amen? God has loved us so much. He's given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. So he's warning the priests in various capacity. He said he will send curse. And he will not bless them. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. Ha! The punishment goes down again. May the Lord help us. How will he go to descendants when the first carrier of the grace are not functioning well? Then the, the recruits that are coming under them, they too will be doing their own thing. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. I will spread on your faces the offer. That is poo from your first festival sacrifices. And you will be carried off with it. And you will know that I have sent you this admonition so that my covenant with Levi may continue. Such a person will be removed so that his covenant with Levites. Levites are priests. Amen. They also can be likened to the minister and the priest today. They are the people that serve in the household of faith. They are the people that eat from the household of faith. Amen. They are the people that when you work so hard, you'll be blessed. But when you begin to do wrong, wrong things that Levites are not supposed to do, when they, as Levites, they are supposed to be paid from the money from the church. Amen. 
That's a Levite. And if a Levite now, like the Levite that we have today, they say they are Levite. And the whole money that is made from the church is put in their own pocket. What type of Levite is that? There are some Levites like that. We don't earn salary, no. In our own time, things must be done properly. So if you are that priest or priest that is taking church money anyhow, that is dodging, 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 Levite, stealing. Look at what he said will happen. All this wrong thing that he has said will happen. And you will know that I have sent you this rebuke or this warning, admonition, so that my covenant with Levite may continue, says the Lord Almighty. My covenant was with him, a covenant of what? Life and what? Peace. And I gave them to him, the, uh, and I gave them to him, this called for reverence and what? And he revered me and stood in awe of me. Any, any, any priest that loved the Lord will reverence God, amen, and revere him. And we stand in awe of him. True instructions was in his mouth. And nothing false was found on his lips. You know, these are apostles' own uh, special messages for us. Those of you that have been to PVM meetings, you'll be hearing this. True instruction, they don't tell lies. You know, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, 1 to 8, you can write that down. And when you leave this place, you go and read it about priests. And uh, Numbers, chapter 1, verse 47 to 54. Go and read about priests as well. They are the tribe that are set apart for God's own service. And I believe that as individual priests in our various capacities, God has set us apart for his own service. Numbers 1, 47 to 54. Deuteronomy 18, 1 to 8. Go and read about the priest there. It will be more clear. True instruction was in his mouth. And nothing false was found on his lips. Uh, the true priest, a true priest. They don't talk anyhow. They don't gossip. They don't cause dissension among their, their members. Somebody don't tell them something and they go and talk. <laughs> a friend is suffering from something. He just met me now. True priests don't do that. You know there are some priests that do that. Destruction upon such priests. Their mouth is not they are speaking. No. True priests, their mouth speak what? Truth and what? True instruction was in his mouth and not in false. They don't speak falsehood. They don't tell lies. was found on his lips. He walks with me in peace and uprightness and turned many from what? From sin. Does that remind you of a true priest that we have read about, Micah? Chapter 3, verse 8. True instruction. True instructions. You don't make your children to be lying through instructions. You instruct them from the word of God. They say fathers you should instruct and mothers should teach. Where is your teaching manual that you are using to teach your, your children? You've forgotten about the Bible as mothers? True instructions is upon their lips. How do you instruct your children as fathers? Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8. He said, for the lips of the priest ought to preserve knowledge. And from his mouth, men should seek what? Instructions. What instructions are you giving to your children? What instructions are you giving to the church as priests? Are you giving them instructions that make them to backslide? I want you to put that question mark. Because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. But you have turned from the way. And by your teaching have caused many to what? Stumble. Is anyone like that in the house? I want you to put question mark and go and ask for forgiveness. You have violated the covenant with, the, with Levi, says the Lord Almighty. Have caused you to be displeased, to be despised and humiliated before all the people. Because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in the matters of the law. 
May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. 